the Federal Reserve announced plans for more stimulus and lower mortgage rates in its third attempt at the controversial program to rev up the U.S. economy. The policy, known as quantitative easing and abbreviated as QE3, means the Fed will buy $40 billion in mortgage-backed securities each month. And while the Fed tries to actually lower interest rate, the exact opposite is happening within the walls of mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The FHFA is raising the guarantee fee, known as the G fee on mortgage loans, which is used to cover potential credit losses in case of borrowed defaults or just to cover day-to-day -day admin costs. Say what? So the Fed is trying to lower rates while the mortgage giants are raising their fees and in turn rates? WTF, man! Now if you want to know what all this means, we'll explain in just a couple minutes. I'm Ryan Leopold. And I'm Ben Brashen. Welcome back to Mortgage Resource TV. Okay, so if there's ever been a case where the right hand is not talking to the left hand, Ben, this seems to be it. Yeah, in this Clash of the Titans, we have two trillion dollar industries trying to use the same tool, mortgages, to do two totally different things. So the Fed is trying to stimulate the economy by lowering mortgage interest rates. The hope that lower interest rates and low home prices will get people all jacked up about buying homes. And according to the National Association of Realtors, each house sold actually adds $60,000 to the economy through agents, moving, furniture, inspections, and such. But the FHFA is trying to keep Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac from losing their pants by charging more money for loans, or raising rates, which is ultimately to keep the two mortgage giants in business. So Ben, what exactly happens? Well, the answer seems to me to be a bit disconcerting. Actually, it's on the verge of absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> While the Fed prints a bunch of money to stimulate the economy and to buy mortgage-backed securities, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are shaving points off the top to make money in a strategically named guarantee fee. Now, here's the kicker. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac work through big banks. And do you remember the blog we did about how big banks make maybe six times as much money as homeowners are saving with these low rates to the tune of $12 billion? So after Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, and all the other big banks get their piece of the pie, how much is actually left over for you, me, and homeowners? Now that's where this cluster gets even worse. Let's take a little history lesson to find out if this new Fed purchasing of mortgage-backed securities should actually trickle down to home buyers and homeowners. Ever since the economy hit the skids in 2007, mortgage rates have been in free fall, plunging from near 7% on the 30-year fix to today's levels in the 3 to 3.5% range. And that's a good thing for everyone. But as rates have dropped, loan costs have actually increased, in turn, never lowering rates to where they actually should be. In 2008, the government introduced loan level pricing adjustments on all loans, which made each loan more expensive. And then in 2009, the government upped its loan level prices seven times throughout the course of the year, Ben. Then in 2010, closing costs jumped 37% as banks met government compliance standards. And then in 2011, the FHA more than doubled monthly mortgage insurance premiums. Plus in 2012, the government's payroll tax extension's net effect is to raise mortgage rates by roughly 0.1%. So each time loan costs increase, it mutes the effects of falling mortgage rates. Low rates don't matter if costs wipe them all out. So in the end, economists expect the benefits of QE3 to be minor, and the risks are uncertain. The first two rounds of quantitative easing lowered interest rates and fueled stock market gains, but banks haven't been eager to lend out money readily. Now it is possible the Fed's moves could help the housing market. New construction and home prices have already started to pick up recently, and should mortgage rates fall further, that could definitely could fuel a quicker housing recovery back. Okay Ryan, so what does this all mean? The increase in G fees, the amount Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac charge the lenders to guarantee loans will translate into about 40 to 50 basis points in price to the lender passed down to consumers regardless of which lender they choose. And that translates into increases in mortgage rates that borrowers see by really anywhere from an eighth to half a percent in the very near future. So what would a potential 0.5% increase in rate mean to terms on monthly payments? Well, if rates go from 3.5% to 4% on a 30-year mortgage, the difference in principal and interest payment would look like this. You can see on this chart if you have a loan of 100, 200, 300, or 400,000 and rates go up from 3.5 to 4%, that principal and interest payment 
can really go up. In fact, you could see rises of $28, $57, $85, or even as much as $114. That's not a guarantee rates will go up if the Fed actually has its way. This is a massive tug of war that may increase or decrease rates. If the Fed's power to lower interest rates is more than the GFE's ability to raise them, expect lower rates. If the guarantee fee is higher than the Fed's ability to lower rates, then actually rates will actually increase. Regardless of what happens, we're here to answer your questions and help you with your mortgage needs. And if all of this is making your head spin, leave a comment or a question below and Ryan and I will be sure to answer it. Also, if you leave that comment below, you'll be entered to win an afternoon with us on the golf course. I'm Ben Brashen. I'm Ryan Leopold. We'll catch you next time on Mortgage Resource TV. So after Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, and all the other big... big Shaving points off the top like yeah. a UNLV point guard. Shaving points Shaving like the NFL answer. referees. Well, the answer is a bit disconcerting or concerning? Well, the answer is actually a bit disconcerting. Ben. Actually, it's on the verge of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's too so short.